Welcome to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick, a weekly horror movie review podcast. I'm Tawny Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. Subscribe to get new episodes every Wednesday. We dive into trivia, drink a little whiskey, and of course, give our no BS opinions. Join our Discord server or message us on social media to talk all things scary. And if you like the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find all these links on our website, twochicksinahorrorflick.com. Thanks for listening. Now let's get scared. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're so excited to be with you today. We are talking about warm bodies for 2013. And actually, I meant to intro that differently. I wanted to say, like, welcome to our romantic February, (laughs) romantic horror. I guess I felt like I had, like, a legit name for it, and I didn't. But we are doing all romantic stuff, uh, romantic horror. But before we get into warm bodies, Tawny, what are you drinking? Um, I've got just a big thing of water here. Mm. Trying to stay hydrated, trying to um, not get sick because Jade's been sick this last week. And also um, recording a little later with Mark from a podcast on Elm Street. So I'm saving my drinking for then. <laughs> You don't want to show up and be like, hey, Mark. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's like, I'm crashing. (laughs) Exactly. What about you? What are you drinking? Me too. I got my bottle of water over here and I I got my um, iced tea over here. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to start because I love using wine glasses, but instead of putting wine in them, why should I put like lemonade and iced tea? You know, I feel fancy. Now it's like a mocktail, you know? (laughs) It's like a mocktail. Exactly. It's just that it's sweet tea. (laughs) Nice. All right. So what have you been up to? What, What news do you got for us? Well, shit, it's been a while. It actually has been a couple weeks since we recorded. Um, That's right. Yeah, because our last weekend we did our birthday horror discord birthday party. And I don't know if you did anything for your birthday, um, but we went out on Saturday night uh, with some friends. So that was wild. We (laughs) went and got dinner, then we went and karaoke. So that was fun. Drank a lot. And then our discord party on Sunday was super fun. Also drank a little bit then. So I feel like I've just been in like recovery mode since then, honestly. Like I'm an extrovert, but the older I get, I think the more introverted tendencies I have. And so I really needed to just like um, shut down for this whole week, basically until right now. (laughs) So nice. um, That's what I did. Did you do anything for your birthday last weekend? No, just the Discord party, which was a blast on my birthday birthday. Oh, I worked all day. And then that was like the last day to be in the old house. Oh, right. So Steve and I went over and cleaned it. And then we came home and ordered Chinese food, which I love. Mm. So that's really it. And this, yeah. Yeah. That's it. My parents are here. So they came out because also um, two days after my birthday is my middle daughter's birthday. She turned 18. Wow. She's an adult now. Um, so my parents came out and they're here this weekend to celebrate. And I got, um, uh, I'm pointing at it, <laughs> a new webcam, new lights. Um, I just need to set them up. Some cool stuff. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. But anyways, you were telling me about you and I took over. Oh, no, no. I asked about it. What did you guys do for her 18th per- birthday party? Um it's kind of since I split custody with their dad it was a little bit of a mix he came down um and picked her up and took her snowboarding for a okay. day and then dropped her off here and she w- wanted to be here for me to make her I make this uh grilled sausage and onions on rice that's what she wanted so made her that <laughs> and um then the next day she went to dinner with uh, her friends a birthday dinner and then this weekend we've been celebrating with her grandma and grandma okay so no 18 year old things though like what <laughs> like when i turned 18 i went and got i went and bought cigarettes i did i don't <gasps> and have never smoked but i just was like i can do this now so i'm doing it and so i bought cigarettes i went and got my septum pierced and uh got my a second hole in my ears pierced you know 18 year old shit <laughs> Oh, okay. So she does want her ear pierced, but she didn't go do that because I think you need money for that. Okay. So she'd need me to go with her anyways. Um, 
if we got her some good presents, they wouldn't go get cigarettes. Because oh, lottery tickets. I hate cigarettes you can also get so much. But she can get lottery tickets, yeah. yeah. And then she couldn't go vote. And she but. didn't go get arrested. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> That's good. Keep that off the list. Keep that off the list. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, no. So she she played pretty low key. Mm. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, in terms of watching stuff, what have you been watching? Um, I finished, oh, I finished The Last of Us. Okay. Up until now? Yes. So like, yeah, there's, yeah, up until now. Exactly. Um, and I have to tell you that last episode, I was, I mentioned this to Tanya already, a hundred percent. There's no way I'm going to cry. I'm not attached to any of these characters yet. I don't hate them. I'm just not attached to them. There's just no way. And then the episode played and I was sobbing. Absolutely sobbing. Beautiful, masterfully done. Absolutely loved that. Um, and then I haven't been watching much. I've been reading a ton. Mm. So I have been reading The Last House on Needless Street. I only have about 60 more pages to go and absolutely love it so far. Really got me. I started it. Um, I have, I'm only like 10 pages in, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I also, I just want to also say that I watched The Last of Us and felt the exact same. Like I have never cried so much. I think watching a TV, sh- a TV episode ever in my life, it was so much. And I was so like, I don't know, wrought with emotion. Like I like couldn't stop thinking about it all night and all the next day. And I'm just like, if you're not watching the show, you fucking need to be like, go get HBO, pay for it, find somebody else's, um, you know, login, like, this is the tell. I just I was saying this. Remember, I was like, I think this is going to be the television event of like our time. Like you know, I feel like there was Game of Thrones, and nothing has really rivaled Game of Thrones. And I don't know if this will reach that same level. It might as we go, you know, on through seasons. But oh my god, we're we're only three episodes in, and it's we're off to an incredible, incredible start. And it's the guy who did Chernobyl, which was also incredible. Mm. So God, it's just so good. And I needed to say that. I'm sorry. Keep going. No, that's all I have. It is very good. Reading. Just lots of reading. Yeah, and I just wasn't sure with that show. I was like, okay, well, how's this going to be different than shows with similar themes? Similar themes, right? But wow, that last episode, if they keep giving more of that, not necessarily that story, but more of that type of mastery. Yeah, in their episodes, I'm here for it. Yeah. Oh. And then just reading. I've just been reading, Tawny. Every time I have a spare minute, I read, 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 read. That's awesome. You got to log it. You got to log it in the sheet. Yeah, I am. I'm so proud of myself. I know. You should be. (laughs) I love reading and I'm getting through it. It feels so good. The last time I really did that was when I was a teenager. Yeah. And I would sit down and just consume books like very quickly, kind of like you and your romance. I did that all the time. And then as an adult, I know I just let it slip away. So this has been really really fun. It's hard. It's hard to find time. I think especially when you have other shit going on, you know, and you guys have been really busy lately. I was trying to finish, um, that book, the book before this, um, last house on needless street throne of glass. And I had like, I had like, I don't know, six chapters left or something. And I just could not for the life of me, I wanted to finish it in January and I just couldn't, I I think I finished it on like February 2nd. It took me like a few more days and it wasn't even that many pages, you know, but it just was like, there was so much happening and with Jade being sick, it was just like really tough to set aside the time. So yeah. I finished The Hunger, I think since the last time we talked too. Okay. I finished the book, The Hunger. Um, I do, I did put a little spoil free review on Goodreads. Um, But in a nutshell, the author Almakatsu is an excellent writer. It just wasn't what I was expecting. The horror really was in the last, I don't know, 10, 20% of the book. Okay. And it was good. I just wish there was more of it. I feel like what you were talking about, don't worry, darling, is what I felt like. Oh, okay. Like I wish there was, we we found this out sooner and there was more of that than what there was. So it was hard for me to get through. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, Kara's actually sending me another book, another horror book. So I'm hoping I can stick to these and read them. <laughs> but you, and you can follow <laughs> along in our book club channel that's brand new as of this last yes. weekend <laughs> in our Discord server. <laughs> Yeah, and it's no pressure because 
Like I was like all amped to do this book club channel. And then I haven't put anything in there yet, <laughs> but I will. I'll put like my thoughts and then it'll probably be kind of quiet. So there's no pressure. Just yeah. Read, show up. You yeah. Know. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you? For me, I finished White Lotus season one. Okay. Or season two. Sorry. I, this was just not for me. I think it kept me watching. Right. Like I was like somehow very intrigued, but it's just not. It, it was by the end, I was like pretty frustrated because I had spent so much time and like I felt like there was just not a lot of, I don't know, resolute. I kept thinking shit was going to like pop off and like it kind of does, but not really. I don't know. And then there's really no one for you to root for. There's like only a couple of characters who are like kind of cool, like nice. I don't know. Everybody's kind of a jerk. I don't know. It just wasn't for me. Anyway, so I watched that. I also finished Skin of Marink because it's on Shutter now mm-hmm. a, a couple days ago. I wonder if it's worth, I was thinking about maybe doing like a like thoughts um, thing on it, like not a full episode. I But I, I was like, I actually don't think I can put you through it. You know, like I don't think I can, <laughs> I don't think I can have you watch it. it. I feel like there were some good ideas. It just was... I know it just was way too fucking long. Like it should have been like a 15 minute short and the like vibe of it is really cool. And I like atmospheric movies, but this took it too far. You know, there just was really like no plot or anything. So I was kind of disappointing because everybody was like really hyping it up. Oh, this is the scariest movie. So scary that I've seen in a long time, blah, blah, blah. And it just was like, it was pretty fucking boring to be honest. I was like on my phone most of the time. So don't not worth it. Don't watch it. Not worth it. We could literally just take what you said out and there you go. There's your little yep. review video. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I'll plug, because if you're a longtime listener of the podcast and somehow have managed to listen to the two episodes that I talked about this on, I fucking love the movie Enough with J-Lo, and it is now on Netflix. And so if you haven't seen this movie, you need to go watch it. It's great. <laughs> what was it called? Enough. Oh, enough. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying if I haven't talked about it enough. Oh. <laughs> I was just like, uh-huh. oh, that's the movie. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Because I just saw, I think it was Shotgun Wedding. I didn't see it. I saw the advertisement yeah. for it on one of the streaming services. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, if you slept on enough from the fucking 90s, I don't even know. It might be late 90s, early 2000s. You- I think that I know which one this is, but I don't want to say anything because I don't want to make it like spoilers, but I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's a revenge movie. We'll just we'll just leave it yeah, at that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. That is a good yeah. one. <laughs> Should we talk about this? Let's movie? do it. Oh right, we're talking about Warm Bodies. It's our first romantic horror for the month of February. It was released in 2013. I watched it on Peacock. Uh, the director is Jonathan Levine, and some other movies he's done is Long Shot. 50-50, and one of my and Tani's favorite movies, The Night Before. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I'm sure this guy has done something else. I just didn't know, and I didn't, you know, want to go research it. 50-50, is that the one with um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and, well, I'm blanking. Seth, Seth Rogen. Rogen. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um... I know when I when I wrote down Jonathan Levine, I'm like, this is familiar. We just talked about this person, and it was because we were talking about the night before. Jonathan Levine also wrote the screenplay, and it was based on a novel by Isaac Marion in, um, by the same name, Warm Bodies, and Isaac Marion was inspired by Romeo and Juliet. So if you picked up that undertone of Romeo and Juliet, that is that it is definitely a twist on that story. Our cast. So we have Nicholas Holt as R, Teresa Palmer as Julie, Rob Cordry as M, Leo Tipton as Nora, Dave Franco as Perry, and John Malkovich as General Grigio. I like forgot that Dave Franco was in this. And I was like, I saw his name come up because Jade and I watched it together. We had both already seen it. But I was like, oh shit, Dave Franco's in this? <laughs> Is Dave Franco brothers of the other Franco? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. All right. Stats. The budget was $35 million and the box office was $117 million. 
Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 81%, IMDb a 6.8 out of 10, and Letterboxd a 2.9 out of 5. Okay. All right. When you're ready, we'll move on to Two Minutes with Tom. Here we go. Turn back now if you don't want this movie spoiled for you. And here we go. R is a zombie who spends his time shuffling around an airport and occasionally meeting his zombie friend M for some light grunting at the airport bar. We, we learn through his internal monologue that there are other zombies called bonies that are faster, scarier, and much further decayed than regular zombies. R and some other zombies go out to hunt some humans and come across a group searching for supplies. This is where R eats Perry and meets Julie, who he saves from being eaten and brings her back to the home that he's created inside of a plane. They bond over several days, but Julie wants to go home, so she tries to escape, which catches the attention of the other zombies and bonies. The zombies see that R cares for Julie and M helps them escape. Julie eventually leaves R and goes back to her home, a walled-off settlement in the city. Inspired by R and Julie's love, the zombies begin to transform back into humans and head towards Julie with R to warn her that the bonies are coming after them. The humans and zombies team up to defeat the bonies and get to live in harmony. The movie ends with a fully human R and Julie watching the wall around the city get demolished. The end. All right, Tawny, how do you feel about this movie? Um, well... This was one that we both were like, yes, we're watching this movie. So I don't think it should be a surprise that I fucking love this movie. <laughs> and rewatching it, I was like, damn, this is a great movie. Like, this is just so good. And the thing that I really like about it is that it stands so far apart from any other movie that I can think of. I think it's the penultimate, like, example of what we were going for this month with our horror love movies because i love <laughs> yeah. that there is a love story and the the that is not the horror of the movie you know you have so many movies where people fall in love and as a result of that like one of them is a, the bad guy you know like fresh maybe i don't feel like i'm spoiling anything by saying that um and you, you just never see anything like this right where it's like and it's feel good at the end and every like I just love it. And it's just it's just lives on its own. I love this movie. How did you feel about it? <laughs> uh, I thought it was very cute and charming. I definitely liked it. Um, it was I think those are the that's the best way for me to describe it. It was very cute and charming. I liked the. I liked the take on seeing it from the zombies point of view, immediately I liked that take. I was like, oh, oh look, so they're not just like mindlessly walking around. Yeah. There's this different view of a zombie. And I love the idea of how love can, you know, spark, start their hearts beating again and things like that. And then at the very end, <laughs> at the very end, when she's standing in front of him and, and the dad is like, move, move. And she it seems like she convinces him that no there's another way i thought for sure when she moved he was going to shoot him in the head because that's the type of horror i'm used to but no he was like stand down everyone and i'm like oh shit it's just like feel good yeah it's totally feel good yeah it was a really cute movie had you seen it before mm -mm. you had not i've never seen it. i thought you did mm -mm. No, I've never seen it. Oh, shit. Okay, so this was a first time watch. Okay. I thought... All these movies we're watching this month, I haven't seen any of them. Okay, I knew the other ones, but I thought you had seen this one. I thought you said you had. So, okay, that's interesting. Jade and I both saw it in theaters when it came out, like, oh. forever ago, separately. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I remember this being great, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that I have... It was very cute. And there was... It, honestly, I don't have anything bad to say about it. Um, I think there were times where it felt like it lulled a little bit for me while I was watching, but it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. I just felt uh, like I could be distracted by my phone or something during that time. Yeah. And then it picked up. I mean, I really liked the characters, especially his friend. It's so yes. funny. Yeah. 
very, very cute character. I loved that. But yeah. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad that you um, liked it. I did. It seems like you're lower on the scale of liking it, but that's okay. <laughs> there is something weird, I think, about the tone. I like the tone of this movie. I just don't know that they 100% nail it all the time. You know? Like, yeah. there's moments that feel like they don't quite fit. And I think that could go along a little bit with, like, the pacing. Because there's moments that are, like very comedic and then there's moments that are very serious and i don't think that's like a bad thing but it's just i don't know it feels a little wobbly in places so yeah yeah that's definitely what i felt a little little bit of a lull a little bit wobbly in some places all the characters were good the story's cute i like the take yeah um it, it almost felt like it could have been shorter at one point, I was like, this movie could be shorter. But then I looked and I'm like, oh, it's not very long. No. Anyways. Yeah, I think they they probably could have cut out some of the stuff. Like, I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was something there. I was like, this seems like a kind of side thing that we could have, like, left out. Maybe it was the zombies, like, kind of coming back to life and with the bonies and stuff. Like, I was like, I don't know. We kind of knew. I feel like you could have shown us that like really fast and we would have known what's happening. But yeah. I think the long periods of them getting to know each other. Yeah. I mean, I know that's the point, but I think maybe some of those could have been shortened a little. But I mean, it, you would have had to be careful because you would have wanted it to be believable that she liked him. Yeah. Um. So I get that too. Yeah. It's just a fun, it's just a fun movie, you know? It's a feel-good movie. Yeah. It really is. And it's funny. It is funny. So clever. So clever. Especially when the things he's saying as we're getting introduced to him. I'm not sure why we all walk around the airport all the time, you know? And just like yeah. these thoughts he's having, it's really witty and cute. I like that a lot, too. And I like, um, I think my favorite part, actually, is the end when <laughs> they're like, he's like, I wrote it down, he goes... I wish we could say that we cured the bonies with love, but we just straight up killed them all. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it sounds kind of messed up, but it was a really good bonding experience for us and the humans. <laughs> I laughed so hard. I forgot about that entirely. It was just really funny. Like, it's this very, like, blunt, you know what I mean? Communication, like breaking the fourth wall, kind of. I don't know. It just was really good. Yeah, I agree. And I thought all the acting was good, too, by everybody. Yeah, Nicholas Holt, Yeah, I, like, I just, I know we have already talked about him and how much we love him, but I'm just like, this guy's commitment to being, like, a half zombie, A, I think very fucking well done, but, I mean, I like that he doesn't just jump to being almost human. His commitment yeah. all the way through this movie of running like a half zombie, I just was like, applause, you know, like, good job. <laughs> Nicholas Holt, because he's like just like hobbling around everywhere. And I was like, it'd be so easy to like just run as a human being because you're sick of running like a zombie. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. This is so good. No, you're absolutely right. Um, they actually studied with Cirque du Soleil, um, Cirque du Soleil performers. Um, they had zombie university about how to like make your body heavy, how to move your body. Uh, so the the actors that played zombies had like a zombie school with Cirque du Soleil people. Wow. Okay. And then I noticed this as well because you notice the very gradual changes in how he's walking, also the speed of how he's talking. Yeah. And it's not just like night and day. Yeah. It happens so gradually that all of a sudden you go, oh, he's talking at a normal speed. Yeah. But you didn't realize it. Also, during the zombie shots, they wanted the zombies not to blink. And then as they become more human, they blink more. And he was just saying that it was very hard because his eyes were so dry, especially some of the very long shots where he's, you know, having long thinking periods. Yeah. But yeah. And they're wearing like contacts. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. I was thinking, how are they keeping track of this? You know, because you don't shoot in order most of the time. So it's like, you know, does Nicholas Holt have six stages of being a zombie? Because you're right, it's so gradual that you would have to have like a lot of phases basically and then you'd have to know like what phase am i in in which scene i just i was like this is seamless fucking seamless yeah the makeup is even really seamless because 
He looks like he's gradually not as zombie-esque. Yeah. But I was looking at him thinking, but what's different? Because I definitely still see the veins and I definitely, but there's something different. Yeah. He's looking a little better. And it's just very, very gradual. Yeah. And then finally at the end, I, I'm, I'm almost disappointed that we only get like 10 seconds of Nicholas Holt playing a normal human person, you know, like, <laughs> yes. I mean, he does a really great job as the rest, you know, in the rest of the movie, but I just was like excited to see like fully human R and you only get it for like 10 seconds. Like a tiny piece. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice to see them like a healthy, happy couple. <laughs> Now, if you don't want the book, like if you plan on going to read the book, then you might just want to like fast forward five, 10 seconds because I wanted to tell you um, because I thought this was interesting. In the book, R wears a black suit and a red tie, identifying him as a corporate zombie and has a zombie wife and zombie kids that he has to feed. Uh, The film ditches all of that, obviously, and then ages the character down, dresses him in jeans and a hoodie. They still tied in the same type of color elements, though, that he wears. Mm, Okay. And also the film changes the ending to the book significantly with Julie eventually biting R when he kisses her. This results in both of them becoming infected with and becoming something new. R does functionally resurrect but he and julie's eyes become gold indicating they are now the opposite of zombies this is preceded by the book's ruminations on the nature of humanity's darkest impulses which the film largely skips over interesting okay but there okay so there is still this love story in the oh yeah 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 so he's a weird about this (laughs) he's kind of an adulterer right yeah he cheated (laughs) What the hell? You're at least emotionally cheating. Yeah. Good change. I think really good change. Yeah. Because I don't think we would have liked no. him as much if his poor wife and zombie kids and he's like, ah, I'm into this human chick over here. Yeah. She changes me back, but y'all are screwed. Yeah. I mean, because is the wife going to be able to change back? Because she's going to be pissed. Yeah. So how is she going to find her heart? <laughs> it's going to take her a long time. She's got to get over that. She's got to yes. work through it. Fuck, they gotta get a zombie divorce, okay? Yes. Jesus. Okay, weird. I was wondering about the book because I ne- I didn't know until we were watching this time and I saw, you know, based on the book by, and I wondered, what is this book like? <laughs> you know, did they make any changes or what? Huh. I did notice one thing I noted here uh, in my notes is when R is thinking back, remember he has that vision of, oh, the way life used to be when everyone could express themselves and enjoy each other's company everyone's on phones. It's just like a small thing. I thought it was so funny. Oh, I didn't pick up on that. Okay. Yeah. Everyone is in the park or sitting in the benches together when he's envisioning this. Next time you watch it, look, because every single person is on the phones. Oh man. Yeah. That was (laughs) definitely a joke. (laughs) Yes. I feel like there's some of that that kind of slips by, you know, that's like kind Mm -hmm. of dry humor. And you're like, that was funny and good, you know? Yes. I was wondering, uh, I saw a lot of this when I was researching and I didn't realize that people were so passionate about zombies and zombie mythology. Uh, But the director said, I think this movie takes the mythology in a different direction. And I think there is a lot there for diehard zombie fans. He explains, we're encouraging people to be open minded because it does take some liberties with mythology, but at the same time, it's very grounded in the science of zombieism and uses that as a springboard for a more fantastical story. It may be divisive, but I think there's a lot there for zombie fans. And if they're open-minded to a new take on it, I hope they, I hope they can, I hope they can enjoy it. And I was like, why is there so much? Okay, everybody. This is going to really piss you off. And I didn't realize there were some real passionate zombie people out there. I definitely think this happens. I mean, you know, because you get like even, you know, you look at other monsters like vampires, you get kind of the the general consensus about like what vampirism is and how it spreads and blah, blah, blah. And if anybody kind of changes that up, 
I think sometimes it can go over well, and sometimes people are like, what the fuck is going on? This isn't how normal zombies or zombies or vampires work. And so I feel like that, I, I feel like I could see how people feel that way about this, but I think this movie does a really great job of like expanding kind of what he said. Like you kind of, you start with a baseline of zombieism and then, but I love the additions. That's one of my notes that I wrote down. I love the fact that we, we see now that they get people's memories by eating their brains. Like I thought that was really interesting concept that's never been explored that I've seen in another zombie film. And it was like really um, touching that as a zombie, you don't feel alive anymore. And so like, it's part of the, like what is good about eating people is that it gives you that feeling of being alive in people's memories and feelings and stuff like that. I just thought that was really, really good. And the fact also that there are like different stages to zombies, I feel like that's not a super new thing, but this one takes it even further in the way that, you know, they're kind of all sentient, even the bonies. The bonies are be able, they're, they're alive enough to know, <laughs> not alive, maybe that's the wrong word, but they're like smart enough to know what's happening. And that's what causes them to go after R and Julie because they want to stop this mm -hmm. um, like from spreading. So I don't know. I just I thought it was really cool. I liked the changes. Me too, because if you think about it, there are stages to infection and disease in general. Yeah. And some happen very rapidly. Uh, but I liked this take on because we see a lot of once the person's a zombie, you know, watch out. But we don't really know what's going on. Are there thoughts? Yeah. Is there a little bit of that person inside of the body? We just don't know because it's so overtaken by the infection. So I really liked this take on it as well. And what you said, I think that that's a fun idea to explore because they, you know, they eat brains and memories that helps them feel more alive. And then as alive people, we do stuff that's like near death to make us feel more alive. Oh, totally. Like uh, adrenaline rush type things, riding bikes off cliffs and stuff like that, yeah. or jumping out of airplanes. Like this is not, I mean, lots of people like it and they love it. And that's fantastic. I'm just like, it boggles my mind. The, the last thing you want to have to do when you get on a plane yeah. is actually use any of the little safety stuff that they're telling you about before the plane takes off. And there's people that sign up and pay money yeah. to jump out of planes. Oh. So that's a very curious uh, idea. Yeah, that's really interesting. I didn't think about it like that. But that is a really good take. And I do think that there's something to be said about this movie. I felt like it was definitely a commentary on something. And for me, I read it this watch as, you know, this age in my life as like a commentary on cynicism. Like, mm -hmm. and that was kind of like the bonies. Like they were like, there's some people are too far gone, you know, but you can, yeah. you can come back. And I, I also think obviously there's a parallel. This is like, I think a pretty obvious one of him, like just going about his day, like how we do, you know, it's like, you just get up, go to work, come home, eat, go to sleep, get up, go to work. Like a zombie. Yep. And uh, like how that can lead to cynicism and but you can always come back from that by like caring for others, you know, is kind of what I felt like it was saying. I don't know if that was the intent of the movie, but that's what I got from it, this watch. So I think that is the intent. I think that's one of the intents. Actually, act actress Teresa Palmer said, for me, the core of the story is that love breathes life back into people. The human connection saves us. People who have had I'm sorry, people who have had those lights dimmed inside them, when they fall in love, they get brighter. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's definitely true. Earlier this week, my day job has been insanely busy, insanely. And earlier this week, I was, I think it was like Thursday, I showed up at a meeting and uh, I had my team members there. And I said to one of them, I was like, I am, no, I just feel like a zombie. And I hadn't even watched this movie okay. yet. It was just the best description of, I was so tapped out, like just very tired and drained, especially because the move, the extra work at that moment, I just felt numb. Like my head was buzzing. And that was the best word to describe it is I felt like a zombie. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. And how we just all go around doing, doing our thing until something, passion, love, something lights us up. Yeah. 
and like colors the world more. You know what else I like? Because at, at its core, it is a, a, hor- a horror love story, right? It is a love story between mm-hmm. these two. But I, I like also that the other zombies kind of wake up and it doesn't have to be romantic love. It's it's like he mentions, you know, the humans teaching us things and like learning to live with us, like brought us, some of us back. So it's not, I don't think it ha- has to be read as like romantic love necessarily. And I liked that too. Yes. Okay. Uh, gosh, what was it? So I was just listening to the book, The Untethered Soul this morning. There was something about, and someone was talking uh, about how as you change, yeah, I think it was actually in The Untethered Soul, as you change your own reality, yes, it was, your own reality and your view, and you're just, say you're just focusing on that, you're healing yourself. You're changing the way you view things. You're changing the way you react to things. It starts to spread. Other people that know you, see you, interact with you, they start to feel that themselves. And maybe they start incorporating that naturally without even knowing within themselves and their everyday. Um, And so that's kind of what happened here in the movie is what I'm trying to say. Is they saw those two doing something different, standing up for themselves, experiencing something different, something more light, something happy. And it started to spread. They didn't go and say, Hey, you guys, yeah. you need to stop. You need to change. They just saw yeah. these two making change and they started to change themselves. Yeah. That's cute. That's a cute movie. Yes, <laughs> it is a cute movie. It's changing the world. This movie. <laughs> One thing that I wrote down is I do like, I feel like there's moments in this movie that it kind of leans into like movie tropes as a whole. And I feel like that's kind of fun, you know, like they have like a makeover scene, but, but these are the moments that I feel like I, that I I don't know if they quite hit tone wise. So I was trying to think about, you know, why did they do this? And I think it's because they are kind of poking fun at at a trope or, you know, they're incorporating that inside of this movie. And it made me dislike it less because I was like, okay, that's kind of fun. You know, we have, we get a makeover montage. There's like the thing at the end where they're walking slow motion (laughs) to the (laughs) like Scorpion song. And it's like really intense. And I feel like that's funny along with the um, intro where he's having the like internal monologue. I feel like all of those are kind of tropey and it was fun to, watch this movie poke fun at it and incorporate it in the plot. Yes, Yes, I agree. And I wrote here, I really liked the music as well. Yeah. Fun songs, fun music to listen to. I thought it was super cute, especially with that makeover scene. I don't remember the song she plays first. It was, but it was, it like, was Pretty Woman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. And it's like ridiculous. And then she's like, what? And then plays something yeah, different. she's like, <laughs> it's not. She's like, it's funny. And she's like, no, it's not. Turn it off. And they <laughs> turn it off. I, I thought that was really good. Yeah. Cute. Very cute. Yeah. It's just it's like you said. It is a cute, charming love story with real thoughtful ways of presenting the story that we're a familiar story we're used to in a different point of view, whether it's a zombie apocalypse story or a Romeo and Juliet story. Yeah. And I thought it was fun and really well done. Yeah. I'm glad that you liked it. It's super. It's a really fun movie. And if you like anybody who hasn't seen it should watch it. I feel like it's one of those that everybody Mm -hmm. should see who likes horror movies. It's just so different. Yeah. We need more of this. This is what I want to see. It was nice watching something where it just all turned out well. (laughs) Yeah. You know, they got to be in love. He got to become human again or resurrect. He didn't get shot in the head after she moved out of the way by the dad. Yeah. Which I thought for sure was going to happen. He didn't die. I thought he was going to die. I think the first time I watched yeah. it, when he, when he leaps out the window with her, you think, oh, this is, he's going to die. Yeah. Or when he gets shot and she's like, you're actually bleeding. Yeah. You're bleeding. I was like, oh man, here we go. No, no, it's all right. Survived. Guys, we got you. It's all right. <laughs> Those bonies, don't even worry about it. We killed, killed them. them. <laughs> Straight up killed, killed them all. Everybody's healthy now. Everybody's healthy. <laughs> so much fun. All right, well, are you ready to rate Let's it? Let's do it. This was a quick discussion, but... I kind of figured it would be, only because it is straightforward. Yeah. Um, it's straightforward, fun, and cute. So, all right, well, let's rate it. Okay, so what... 
would you like to rate this movie? I think I'm going to go a four on this. Nice. I really like it a lot. I love this movie and I've loved it since I watched it. And I just think I, it's really good. But I just I feel like I can't go. I don't you know how we talk all the time about like it's kind of a horror comedy. It's kind of a horror drama. And like, I don't those are just aren't like my fave fave. But this is a really good version. This is like the best version of the those movies, I think. So I'm going to go. Yeah, a four. Where do you where are you landing? All right. So where I'm landing is a 3.25. OK. It, I in, enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute and charming, like I mentioned. There were those lulls yeah. that then I started to become kind of distracted. Um, but I feel like that is a good score. <laughs> it was because I was looking at the other things like 3.5 and higher. And I don't think that I engage with it as much as the ones that I scored 3.5 and higher. Okay. Um, but I did very much enjoy it. And I think that people should watch it. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Would would I watch it again? I would if somebody else wanted to, but I don't think this is going to be a movie that uh, I put on often or watch yearly. Mm. Like I didn't have that m- much of a reaction towards it. Okay. I I think because of the lulls, yeah. but it was very cute. I mean, yeah, that's the thing is like, I haven't rewatched this movie until now, even though I really loved it. And I do think it's worth a watch, but I agree. It's not really like one of those that you're like, I'm going to watch this every six months or whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because I think of, um, and it's so silly. I, I think of it all the time. I think of Ducker and Ducker and Tail is literally <laughs> what I just freaking said. Tucker and Dale versus Evil, and I want to watch that again. I haven't yet, just because we have so much stuff we have to watch. Yeah. But I want to see that again. I remember just laughing so hard. Um, I think of things like the menu and that real dark humor. Yeah, I and mean, it's not even compared. This was not dark. Hu- I mean, I guess it's dark humor, but yeah. Anyways, anyways, I digress. <laughs> Three point two. Okay, I think that's. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. It was. I fun. think that's consistent with how I felt like you were talking about it. You know what I mean? Like I could tell that you okay. weren't on the same level as me, but you liked it, so I accept. Yeah, I accept three point two five. I really did like feeling happy. Yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> I'm telling you, I really want to. This was like the goal. This is the version of this movie where it ends up. In the end, good for them. <laughs> there are so little. There's like almost no movies like that. So at least yes, horror, I horror have... movies. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, for our next episodes, we're actually going to be giving you for Valentine week, a horror romance double feature. So we're going to be, um, we are going to be releasing a an episode on Valentine's Day and then one on the 15th on our normal Wednesday. So it's going to be fun. The first one we're doing is Bones and All. That'll be our Valentine's Day special. And after that, we're doing Life After Beth. So very excited to be doing that. Now, I don't know anything about these movies. I haven't seen them. From the gist of it, I could, uh, you know, Life After Beth seems like kind of like this one, like a lot of humor. Mm -hmm. That bones and all. I. (laughs) So my parents are here and I was like, oh, we're going to do romance. So everything is going to be like real feel good horror. And so let's watch the trailers for all these movies. I was so excited. And so um, we started Warm Bodies and then I put on bones and all and it was like, I (laughs) let's move on. Let's not finish this because my mom went, oh, God. Okay, hold on. (laughs) let's go to life after bed okay that's funny and then the other one we're doing later uh this month that one looks just like i i think i'm gonna really like it it looks hilarious but yeah we, i'm excited yeah we got a little bit of a mix here i yeah uh i did early watch bones and all we watched it yesterday and i will try to be re-watching it a second time if i can squeeze it in because i felt like it was probably one that i wanted to like sit on for a week you know or some time at least before we record. Um, and I'm glad that I did. So if you're able to find some time, I would recommend it as well. Cause okay. it's, there's a lot <laughs> is what I'll say. Okay. I will. There's a lot. I'll, I'll sit on it and I'll watch it like Monday or Tuesday yeah. so that I have time. Yeah. 
Um, oh, the last one we're going to watch is Freaky. That's yeah. right. This looks like it's going to be a real good time. Yeah. I've seen all and of then these. <laughs> ev- <laughs> and then everybody, just so you know, um, we are going to do a Patreon pick. And so we will be releasing that at the end of the month. And that will be our March 1st episode. Will be, I mean, that first week. I think it's March Yeah. 1st. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Maybe not. I'm full Who knows? Of shit, first probably, March episode. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You all, we love you. And if you like us, please do follow us on Instagram at two chicks and a horror flick. Or you can search for us on your favorite social media platform and follow us there. You know what we didn't mention that I want to mention? Um, is we did our Discord birthday party and we did a bracket, right? Where we took horror villains and we put them up against each other to see who came out on top. And the final, final winner was Damien from The Omen. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just needed to shout that out to let everybody know out of many, many, many horror mashups. <laughs> Damien came out on top. So I don't know. Maybe we'll do some more of that later in our Discord server. Keep a lookout. We might uh we might do a little thing, a little extra party. Because <laughs> it was fun. That was fun and intense. Yeah, that bracket went on forever. And thank you everybody for just sticking with it. I know. Everyone just stayed. I didn't realize it was gonna take <laughs> as long as it did. It was so big. It was fun. Yeah. I hope everybody had fun. It was, it was funny to watch people um, root for different people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and then I have another thing. As always, if you want to support the show, you can give us a like, review, and subscribe on whatever podcatcher you're listening to us on. And on that note, we do have a new review that I want to read. <gasps> yes, that is what I want. Yes. <laughs> you were like, there's something. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Um, I can't read the full title, uh, but it starts off, if I could give more stars, I would. Mm. An N-E. I think it's a new something. This review is from Corey Silva. And Corey, if you're listening to this, I don't know if that's actually Mm. your first name. Who knows? Um, But whoever wrote this review, please get in touch with us on social media. Like, we would love to message back and forth because at the end of this, you'll see um, they gave like a bunch of reviews or a bunch of not reviews, but recommendations of other movies and TV shows to watch. And so would love to talk through that. Obviously, we love interacting with people. So here's here's the review. Wow. I don't know where to start. I stumbled across you ladies after I watched Barbarian, came looking for a general review of it. After searching, your podcast was one of the first ones to pop up and the clever name drew me in. The rest was history. I love the way you break down the movies, but even more, I love how you take time in between to talk about real life stuff. Most people don't like talking about their personal lives, but I appreciate you two being open to that. You are like two peas in a pod. (laughs) I wish I could hop through the screen into the episodes with you. Listening to almost every episode, I have a sense of what you two like in movies and TV, and it's mirroring what I love about cinema myself. I wake up looking forward to new episodes, so that tells you something. Before I draw this to a close, I'll leave you with some of my personal faves. For movies you'll love, Under the Shadow, 2016, Saint Maud from 2021, In Fabric from 2019, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, 2014. We actually talked about doing that one a lot this month. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's coming soon. We'll see. Demon from 2016, Hatching from 2022, His House from 2020, Lamb from 2021, and then got to pull up the second message for tv you'll love fargo um legion mindhunter them the outsider the terror room 104 and sharp objects if you've seen any of these great if you haven't and end up watching any also great i'm sure they'll hit a sweet spot keep up the amazing podcast and thanks for making conversation great again (laughs) ciao dude this made my week. me too i actually screenshotted it so i have it in my photos <laughs> i was yeah. shared it with my family i shared it with my kids thank you so much for taking the time to write that and i'm so happy you feel that way like it's just so great i i can't even i can't even express how i feel without saying so like lots of times <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Because it's just a really great feeling. I Yeah, I feel like it really encapsulates like what is so fun about podcasts and what I hope our podcast is for other people, like that they feel like they're having a conversation with us and that they can have a conversation with us. Like, again, we talk about this all the time, but we love messages from people like, please send us messages so we can talk about it, you know? Um, get yes. in our discord. That's where we are a lot of the time to like actually converse back and forth about things. We talk about movie TV shows and stuff that we are watching. Felicia and I try to stay away from movies we know we'll review just so that it's more of a surprise how we felt about the movie to each other. But yeah, I really felt like also it encapsulated everything that I like hope that people feel when they listen to our episodes. So I also want to say thank you so much for just saying all of that and taking the time. It was very nice and it made my life. <laughs> yeah. Ditto. Yeah. Absolutely. Ditto. And we have seen a few of these things. Um, we did an episode on his house that exists. Uh, TV. I think I've seen like all of this. I've seen Fargo. Yeah. You Have you seen that? Have you seen uh, Legion? Yeah. 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 Legion also has Nicholas Holt in it, which is awesome. Mindhunter, obviously the best. Super great. Um, I haven't seen them but I have seen The Terror. Have you seen that? No, I don't think I've seen The Terror. I've seen Sharp Objects. Okay, I haven't seen Sharp Objects. And I read the book too. I was thinking about, I was, because we kind of need a new show. And I was like, maybe Sharp Objects should be our next one. Because I kind of missed it. I know it's it's already, it's happened now, but <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I love, I love it. I want to look at all of these that we haven't seen <laughs> and talk to you person, Corey Silva, about this. So please, yes, message us. Yes. Anyway, so that's an example of how you can help us. <laughs> <laughs> and we read them on the episode. So send us reviews. But that's it. And we'll see you next week. And we hope you have such a good night uh, with no nightmares. And we hope you have a little bit of love in your life for February. Yes. <laughs>